Hi, we just finished meeting for intonation practice on Wednesday, October 12th, and we had a lot of connections today, so it's good practice and a lot of T's changing to D's. So we started with, I need to know all the ins and outs of that exam. I need da, the T changes to a D, and you only hear one D, I need da, no, and then the W-A, no wall, the ins and outs, we don't have to say the D, outs, uh, we don't have to say the V, <laughs> that exam, the T changes to a D. So it sounds like this, I need to know while the ins and outs of uh, that exam, I need to know while the ins and outs of that exam, I need to know all the ins and outs of that exam. Da 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 da. This is an example of. I should write this in here. Voice to text gone wrong. Is he will join us later? And that made no sense to me until I said it out loud. Izzy will join us later. So. Google didn't understand that Izzy was one name and they Google translated it as is he. However, that's pretty good for Google to recognize that there is H deletion because we don't say is he when you say the name Izzy. If there's a any pronoun that starts with H that's not the subject of the sentence, you can get rid of the H. So instead of is her, test today, get rid of the H, connect the Z to the ER, iser. I should make that line there. Iser. Iser test today. Iser. <laughs> it's a yes, no question, so it'll go up. Iser test today. I get caught up in my emotions. Caught up in. T changes to D. When you say the word Emotion. You can say E, emotion, or the E is not stressed, so it's more likely to sound like a uh, emotion. So then when you're going from the high, my, my emotion, I get caught up in my emotions. I get caught up in my emotions. I get caught up in my emotions. I can check the system events log. No, I can check the system event system event logs and let you know. So you can say let you or let cha. The T and the Y make a cha. And the, you can say oo for you or ya for ya. <laughs> ya for ya. Of course. <laughs> I can check the system event logs and let you know. I can check the system event logs and let you know. Logs and. I appreciate it. I ya. Uh, Oh, this is a good example. I was looking for another example of the intrusive Y, and here it is. I appreciate it. Then the T changes to a D. I don't know about it. I you could do no. You could emphasize the don't because it's a negative word, and those are high probability words to emphasize. But I was thinking if I was saying this in an answer to somebody's question, like, um, "Hey, that new restaurant finally opened," and I would say, "Oh, I don't know about it." I wouldn't say, I don't know about it. I would say, I don't know. I, I didn't know that was happening. <laughs> I don't know. And instead of don't, you don't say the T at all. I don't know. I don't know about it. All connected. I don't know about it. I don't know is often written like this in the part that's in quotations. I don't know. And it sounds like I don't know. I don't know. Don't know. Don't know. Let me changes to this spelling. I guess I should put that in quotations as well. So, let me. Um, and it sounds like let me. So, we drop the T completely. Let me know. Let me know. If you want to go and want to changes to wanna. Um, let me changes to let me. If you want to go, just let me know. If you want to go, just let me know. If you want to go, just let me know. Oh, we, we skipped this one, and it looks like a very nice one. Peace be upon you. I'll do it right now. Peace be upon you. This is important. Peace be 
your, that's an intrusive Y, upon you. Peace be upon you. I'm going to put the uh, stress on upon. Peace be upon you. I'm going to peace, <laughs> peace be upon you. Peace be upon you. I hid the chips above the stove. <laughs> True story. <laughs> Chips above. I hid the chips above the stove. Um, and remember to make stove with a rounded lip stove. Cars on the road. Cars on. We'll connect. Cars on the road. Cars on the road. Let's postpone. I'm in a total fog today. I'm in. Na. Let's, you don't have to say the T. Let's, let's postpone. I'm in a total fog today. Um, and that was brain fog. That's what that meant. Can't think clearly. Let me, let me know when you're feeling up to it. Let me know when you're feeling up to it. Did you ever have a toothache? Did you is going to connect and make did j, did you or did ya? So you can either one. Did you, did ya ever have a toothache? Ever have a, lots of V practice. Did you ever have a toothache? It's a yes, no question, so it'll go up. And um, we talked a little about intrusive W and intrusive Y. I mean, that doesn't, it doesn't look like they're there, but they are putting themselves in there <laughs> because of movement from one sound to another. So when you have a rounded sound, do, and then an unrounded sound, your lips go from small forward to back do it. And it makes an invisible W. Do it. <laughs> and when you have a high sound going to a lower sound, your tongue is high and then it goes down, it can slide and make a Y. I, your tongue finishes in a very high position. Am, your tongue is very low. But instead of taking a break, I am, I am. Just keep your tongue sliding and it will make an invisible Y. And that happened I appreciate it. And it happened, my emotions. So thank you for asking. And I will make my next week's newsletter about that because I have a lot more examples. It's not a list of words you have to practice and remember. It's more of a rule and being more aware of it. And if you are pronouncing these sounds correctly, then they should happen just accidentally by keeping your tongue moving and your lips moving from one sound to the next without taking a break. Um, this is the link to my newsletter, and that's where I'll be posting um, next Tuesday, the 18th, about the intrusive W and Y. So thanks for asking, Eva. Have a good day. Have a good weekend. See you next week.